My name is Christian Schwarz. My iNaturalist username is Leptonia. I'm a research associate at the Norris Center for Natural History at UC Santa Cruz, and I run the Santa Cruz Mycoflora Project. I am one half of the authors of Mushrooms of the Redwood Coast, which is the newest field guide to coastal California's mushrooms from Monterey to the Oregon border. Mushrooming can be used to refer to either the practice of going out and collecting mushrooms to eat, so wild edible mushroom foraging. When I say that I'm going mushrooming, I'm going out to document the whole swath of biodiversity of mushrooms, so or fungi in general. So I'm not necessarily looking to bring things back to the table, but really just to document floristically what's out there. The best time to look for mushrooms is really dependent on how much rain there has been and how much soil moisture there is. Mushrooms are the sexual reproductive structures of the organism and they're inflated with water. So they need water in the soil in order to, to produce the fruit bodies that we see. Usually at the beginning of the season, it takes one to two weeks for the first real big crop of mushrooms to come up. And then as long as there continues to be rain and the temperatures don't get too cold, uh, they can just keep going. So learning to look for mushrooms, I think the most important thing to learn is uh, to learn to read habitats. So learn your local native trees, uh, learn the different habitats that you know are in your area. And some mushrooms have a symbiosis with certain types of plants, especially certain trees and woody shrubs, uh, and they can be way more productive than other types of habitats. It's really easy to find all the showy stuff that is big and above ground and colorful, but there's probably 10 species you're missing for everyone that you're seeing when you're a beginner to mushrooming. So eventually you'll learn how to read the leaves and the duff and see what mushrooms are hiding under it. So this is a good example of a mushroom that you might otherwise miss uh, as a beginner until you've learned to read the duff and see where these things called shrumps are. So this is a mushroom that's pushed up a bunch of leaves and soil and makes this little mound and you can sort of gently excavate the mushroom out of it and find a lot of mushrooms this way that you wouldn't otherwise see. So this is a massive mushroom that barely was visible from the trail. Um, or learn to key in on certain habitats. Some mushrooms grow only on the bark of certain trees and you'll learn to look there. Uh, but it takes a while. It's a lot of looking in crevices and uh, learning sort of the different types of, of substrates that mushrooms can grow on. Other than your smartphone, which will associate a GPS point and a date with your photo, bringing a notebook is also important so you can record where you were and what date you were there, as well as maybe what trees were around, so habitat can be really important for fungi. A knife is useful to help dig up mushrooms that are buried deeply in the soil or to slice them in half because oftentimes the color of the flesh or any staining reactions can be important. Wax paper bags to sort of keep mushrooms in good shape until you get home. We try not to use plastic because it increases bacterial decomposition. Um, tackle boxes like that you would use for fishing lures can keep little mushrooms in good shape longer. So I always take tackle boxes and a few wax paper bags when I'm out in the woods to collect mushrooms to bring back home. I don't ever recommend that anyone takes their mushroom field guide into the woods. So in general, it's way better to bring the mushrooms back to the field guide. Um, so it's a misnomer to say that it's a field guide really. When you're taking a photo of a mushroom for identification, to put it on iNaturalist or a Facebook group or to show to your friend, it's really important not just to take a top-down picture because it'll just look like you know a white circle or the cap of a mushroom. The top of the cap is good, the underside of the mushroom is good. So here's an example of a mushroom called Birkandra where it would be a really good uh, thing to take a photo of the underside for uh, your iNaturalist observation. And the way I do that is with a hand lens that I put in front of the lens on my camera. A side view is good, and usually with those three views, you'll get enough that someone who knows mushrooms can identify it. Even more importantly is to not just limit yourself to a single fruit body. If you find 10 or 12 mushrooms of the same species, you can sort of put three or four of them in the same image uh, at different angles to show all of those surfaces at once. And that's probably our preference. Ethical considerations when collecting mushrooms to identify uh, don't trample the understory, don't uh, sort of compact the soil, that can actually hurt the mycelium. Uh, and beyond that, it's just important to know what the regulations are that apply to the land that you're on. Uh, it varies from state parks to national forests, and even then, they're not all the same. So know before you go. Picking mushrooms um, or removing them from the soil to document them is actually not something that you need to be extremely concerned about as far as uh, the viability of that mushroom's population. It's going to continue to spread spores even after you've picked it, as long as it's mature and producing spores already. 
mushrooms are totally safe to touch. You are not at risk of being poisoned by even poisonous mushrooms just by touching them. You have to eat them in order to uh, be poisoned. Uh, and that is sort of the, the biggest safety concern, is that people who are going out to pick wild edible mushrooms will eat something that they don't know, and that's really easy to avoid. If you don't know what your mushroom is, don't eat it, and you'll stay safe. For whatever reason, mushrooms uh, have not gotten the same sort of attention that birds have or that plants have, and there's a ton that we don't know about the mushrooms that even the ones that live in our own backyard. We don't really know how they make their living or what their ecology is uh, or how long they last in the environment um, or what sort of interactions they might have with other organisms. Beyond all that, mushrooms just do interesting things. They glow in the dark, some of them are extremely toxic, some of them are extremely slimy, some of them are super colorful. They're just a really fascinating, captivating uh, set of organisms to engage your curiosity with.